God Hits. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. So guys, thank you for joining me again. I am so thrilled, y'all. Today is the first day of a five-part series that I have held close to my heart since I first dropped it in 2015 and again in 2017, and it is called Overwhelmed with the Weight. As you guys know, if you do follow me, I try to talk about things that people are thinking in their heads, but they're not able to say it. They're afraid to say it or they don't know how to say it. So if you, again, if you are new, make sure you go back to January and February. And I did two other major topics on, uh, let's see, in January, I did an ebook and I did a, a few episodes on moving and it's not just physical moves, it's spiritual moves and mental moves as well. And then last month in February, I did an ebook on forgiveness. And that was pretty major. I faced a lot of opposition, a lot of opposition trying to put those out. And I finally was able to do it. And this month, we are ending out the first quarter of 2022 with overwhelmed with the weight. Waiting is usually something most people struggle with, right? So I wanted to uh, attempt to attack this topic and this ebook from a space of thinking more than acting, thinking more than doing a bunch of stuff out of your flesh and getting a result that lands you in more frustration because you are tired of waiting. Now, let me be clear. I think the premise of this has a lot more to do with just thinking and sitting with the things that God has told you and then you take action versus you just, you know, just think, 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 think and do nothing. No, but what you will find y'all in the process of waiting oftentimes is that waiting requires you to just oftentimes rest and rest can be multi-layered. For some of you, God could be telling you to wait and you rest in his word while you're physically working. Some of you, he may tell you to physically rest while he takes care of the physical aspects of things that need to go on, right? He'll take care of those things while you are getting your body together and you literally relax and get your mental health on point. And then other times, y'all, the weight is just not even about us personally. It's about things that just have to come to pass the way God intended. So something that I noticed that is a big, big, big thing with a lot of people is waiting on a partner and waiting for marriage, that lifelong partner. And I've matured into understanding that it is just not about getting with anybody. It is about covenant partnership. It is about legacy. And that really just can't be with anybody. It doesn't matter what you think in your head. In my opinion, I don't even go by what I thought in my head anymore. I go by what the Holy Spirit leads me with. And I know that covenant is what I'm called to have. And many of you who are listening is call, are called to have. And covenant is oftentimes connected to a weight. I'm going to swing back to that in a minute. Now, I'm about to drop this thing, y'all. Today, we are talking about all these things. That's the name, that's the name of today's episode. So before we start, make sure you like you share, you subscribe, and please turn on the notifications. If you have been following me, you know that I have been shadow banned for a while. Things are trying to pick back up, but we just want to be in agreement. You know, for the, those of you who are for the word coming forth, we just curse and cut off at the root any demonic entity, any viewer, any listener, any any uh, demonic prayers, anything sent to try to stop the word of the Lord. We curse and cut that off at the root. We send arrows dipped in the blood of Jesus, released into the enemy's camp to stop and destroy everything that is trying to end the word of God from successfully flowing through this channel, because we know that there are many more great things to come. So I just feel confident in knowing even with what 
we just prayed that there's some attempts that were made even in the, the preparing for this, that I know the Lord has destroyed. And unfortunately, y'all, the Bible just talks about a pit. There are many people who will build a pit for you and dig a pit for you, and then they fall into it. And this is not something that I plan to say, but I'm going to go ahead and flow with my spirit. Moving forward, if you're going to stay with me through this series, I want you to make sure that you cover yourself and make sure that you get excited, man. I know you've probably been waiting a long time and just a title alone piqued your interest because you have been overwhelmed, but get excited because this is, a, this is not a sad thing. This is not a rebuke. This is not anything like that. I'm going to say some hard truths, and if it feels like a rebuke, you know, it may actually be a bit of a conviction because what I have learned and unpacked in this series is that a lot of things that we get mad with God about, we're not really taking responsibility for our actions. So I still want you to get excited and I still want you to just hear me out because I do believe that there's some things that God is going to show you that are going to really shift and change how you've been viewing things thus far. So here's the, the thing we want to go into, y'all. We stand on Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, and that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So here's the question that I have for you, and it's rhetorical. Oh, by the way, you could also hit the link below my uh, this video, and you can cop a journal if you want. If you don't have your own journal, you I sell a ton of journals, and I have an overwhelmed with the weight journal that you can get to follow through in addition to the ebook, if that's what you would like to have as well. But I definitely have one of those. And it's basically set up so that you can fill in the blanks and you can uh, follow with each one of the things we talk about. The journal is broken down into these five parts. And there's some other little parts in it. But if you want to start answering these questions in there, then that might help you as well. And they're on Amazon. So you can grab it off Amazon if you, if you want to get it. Um, so here we go. Here's your first question. What are you waiting for? Okay, I want you to think about this. Are you waiting for food, drink, clothing? Do you need to get your needs met? Do you have some things that you want? Uh, is it a relationship? I'm asking you that because that's what that's a good starting point for, for us. Now, let's take it back to the word. Matthew 632 says, worrying about these things, quote unquote things, only dominates the thoughts of unbelievers. Come on, that smacked me in my face because listen to me unbelievers worry about things that we know God told us as believers that are, that he's already taken care of, like care of. We don't have to worry about things. So when you start to worry about the very thing he told you not to worry about, guess what? Somebody could pass you up and think you were an unbeliever. Cause God is like, yo, that's my child. I already took care of that for them. I don't really know what all the fuss is about. Because I've already explained to them that I am who I am and I'm going to do what I do in their lives, right? So check this part out, okay? Now, if you come to that place and you realize, wait a minute, I might be giving off some some um, unbeliever type stuff here. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm really trusting God, but maybe I'm not trusting him so much. Watch this. Do you realize, right, how you can sabotage yourself, y'all, by forgetting what God has promised you? Listen, there have been times in my, in my walk, please, y'all, interact with me. Drop this in the comments because I feel like the more people that hear the truth and the honesty about being in a waited, an extended, uh, extended time of waiting, the more people that can relate, the more, that, the more things can break off of them in, in, this, uh, in this series, right? Watch this. Do you understand, right, that you could sabotage yourself because you forget what God promised you? This can make the weight feel excruciating, y'all, and almost cruel. Have you ever felt like you have been waiting so long for something? You started to feel like God was cruel? Like, yo, like, what are you doing to me? I'll tell you this, too. This has happened a lot with people believing for a particular mate, and that wasn't their person. Uh-oh. Right. That is very popular in that area. I know it's happened in multiple areas, but from my, from my experience, that is the most popular. And then you, you're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And you're like, you know, God is like, yeah, like you're going to wait forever. Cause that's not what I got. Like that's an Ishmael. I have an Isaac for you. Right now I'll tell you something else. That's crazy. Right. If, if we break this down, let's break it down and let's, let's think about 
how you moving right now? Like, what are you doing? Right? Why are you feeling so overwhelmed waiting on God to end the wait? Like, what what is the thing in you that's like, yo, this has to end? What happens once you get it? Right? Here's the thing you got to remember. If you're waiting on something from God, you got to know this. Okay, I'm going to break this down. Y'all, God is dope. God is amazing. Right? And if you think about anything that you know God has promised you that you're waiting for, he gives us instructions on how to access what you're waiting for. That's why I use Matthew 6, because the first thing it's saying is saying, seek ye first the kingdom, not the world. So many of us that have been in a space where we have to wait, many times our flesh may have taken over and we may have taken a strategy that is a world strategy when it comes to waiting. So then all of a sudden your nerves get bad, you get aggravated because you're using a strategy that is not a kingdom first strategy, Right? Like, check this out. Let's just go back to the basics of your first. What are your first? When you first get up in the morning, what do you do? When you first come into a blessing, what do you do? When you first meet someone, what do you do? Et cetera. Like, y'all get what I'm saying. What are your first? Because this is telling you right here. Y'all, if we unpack this and break this down, it's going to make so much sense to you because you're not thinking about it from this perspective. If you follow what it's saying, and you seek the kingdom first, then whatever you are waiting on has to go through that filter too. So basically, if God is saying, okay, um, you just have to wait because your spouse is not ready. I'm going to send somebody, but they're, they're not ready. While you're waiting for that, you should be so focused on taking care of those other first. Like, okay, first thing in the morning when I get up, first thing when I get a blessing, I'm praising God. First thing when I get to my job, I got to take care of this. First thing, when it comes to my family, I got to take care of this. You have so many first to focus on that has nothing to do with what you're waiting on that God is like, hey, let me tap you on your shoulder. Hey, 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 look, look, look. If you just focus on what I'm trying to tell you to do, what you don't realize is these first, these first are all there for you to complete so that you can get to the promise. It's just like y'all remember how Sarah did. Sarah got aggravated and said, oh, I'm going to take matters into my own hands. And then here comes Ishmael. And the Lord is like, yeah, it don't matter. I'm still going to send Isaac in my own time. But there were things that God wanted her to do. He didn't want her to do that. You know, and then it, it caused, to this day, it's causing drama. You know what I'm saying? Because of that foolish mistake she did and she moved out of her flesh. So you have to understand that when you go first, right? Right. If, if if your first thing in every area is not kingdom related, then you already set yourself up for a vicious fail. OK, if you don't focus on your first. Right. If you don't focus on your first and you take care of those things first, what you're waiting on doesn't even matter. You got to have that part together first, because when God gives you something, listen, out the gate. OK, out the gate. He has a plan for you. OK, so if he's telling you to follow certain things first, you haven't even followed through on the first thing he told you. So, you know, you got to think about it and think about it being a parent or think about it being somebody's being somebody's child. Think about it from both ends. If a parent has an expectation of a child and the child doesn't do it, but the child is like, hey, hey, mom, hey, dad. You know, I used to do that all the time. Hey, dad, I clean my room. Can I go to the dance? Hey, can I do this? And then if you clean your room and the parent is like, yeah, no, you still can't go. You're going to be mad. Or if, you know, that, that, that child says to that parent, it's like, hey, mom, hey, dad, I made something for you. Could you just give me some time? And they're like, no, I'm cleaning up. I'm doing this. I'm watching TV. And then their feelings hurt because, again, you are preparing and setting something up and saying, hey, I'm waiting for you to come and do this. And then when they don't do it, you become devastated. And that's why God tells us, like, listen, if you seek me first in everything you do, all these things, things, quote unquote, which are equivalent to the things that you are waiting for, those things will be added unto you. So a lot of you are experiencing some fr frustrating and you're overwhelmed with the weight because you're not seeking him first. Trust me. I have gone through many seasons where I wasn't doing it. I will transparently tell you that. And it sucked. And I always had to find my way back because it never landed me where I needed to. I got a really good close friend. And when I tell you this girl has been doing this forever, but you can see it across the board in her life. 
every single area of her life, top tier. And not, it's not that she don't go through stuff. She goes through a lot of heavy stuff. But one thing about this girl, this girl does not deviate from that. She does not deviate from getting in there and getting in the trenches and praying. And yeah, of course, even she did. She's had her ups and downs where, oh, you know, I'm feeling away, but never a thing where God was not first and not placed in a position that he was supposed to be in. Okay. Now, Here's the thing, y'all. Now, this might make some people a little upset, but I got to say this. So if you are a person who you're not seeking the first, but you're heavily focused on the things that you're waiting on, okay, this could cause you to erroneously get angry at God, but you're only getting angry at God because of your lack of obedience. And because you are waiting on something and you are mad that he didn't do it. Now, you're mad. You literally mad because you were disobedient. God is not going to change the time that he releases the covenant blessing to you. God is not going to change the date and and he's not going to move his clock for you or for me. That's not how it works because he's the great I am. He's our creator. He knows better than us. He knows everything about us. In fact, he knows all the things about us that we don't know about us. And if God did decide to make an edit in his time frame or do something for us, it's still in our best interest. And he knows all. I tell y'all all all the time, yo, it's just in my personal lowly opinion, it is just super arrogant to me, you know, to just think that I'm just out here willy nilly and I don't have nobody to answer to. And they literally have somewhere out here and there's somebody in this universe. God created this universe. Somewhere out here in the universe that God created, okay? Someone knows more about me than I know about myself. And I know that's my creator. I know that's the most high God. So when I think about that, I can't contend with that is what I'm saying, y'all. That's all I mean. I can't contend with that. So when I think about that in its totality, it just lets me know that at the end of the day, that whatever it is, that God is trying to do for us, especially when it comes to waiting. He knows all right now. Watch this. Watch this. So like I was saying, right, we don't want to erroneously get angry at God, right? Because of our lack of obedience. So let's just think about it like this. Wouldn't that make you mad if someone charged you for something that you didn't do? Think about that. And secondly, right, If God is saying for us to seek his righteousness, we got to ask what is righteousness. Okay. And when you think about that, and you know me, I jump in by definition, it's the quality of being morally right or justifiable. All right. So think about it. I think most people, for the most part, not everybody, but I think for the most part, you know, this might be a cool space for a generalization right here. I think that there are people that really understand it, like the gist of it, meaning that we have good morals and ethics. At least most people try to operate by that. Right. And when we're righteous, that means something is justifiable. So think about that scripture. Think about that scripture. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Excuse me. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. So you're not just putting certain things first with the kingdom in mind. You're seeking his righteousness. So what what it's basically saying is if you're waiting on something, let's say you're waiting on marriage, approach it, perhaps approach it like this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God when it comes to marriage and his righteousness. So this is the kind of stuff you want to work on. You want to make sure that Whatever you do concerning the thing you're waiting on, God is amplified and that thing is not an idol. It is not something on a pedestal. It is not something that is beyond God. Going to God to get it is a prerequisite to get it. Not the other way around. Not, hey God, give me the guy, give me the girl, give me the marriage, and then I'm going to do whatever. It's not like that. So let's look at this this way. If you use the vantage point that You're going to take the thing you're waiting for and say, okay, God, how can I seek you first in this? 
Is there anything about me that you need me to work on? He might say, look, just work your nine to five job and I got the rest. He might say, okay, hey, I want you to study this. Hey, I want you to fast. Hey, I want you to be kind to this person. Hey, I want you to work at the mission. Hey, I want you to to be a designated driver for people. Hey, I want you to do this. It could be the most random things that just seem like they're crazy, but there is a plan and you're basically learning how to serve while you wait. Okay. You're basically learning how to serve while you wait. And so then, like I said, it's saying seek ye first and his righteousness. So then he's saying this He's like, listen, make sure, make sure that while you're seeking me first and you're waiting and you're waiting, make sure you're doing things that are morally right and make sure you're doing things that are justifiable in my eyes. So y'all, a lot of times the wait is so brutal and feels so cruel. And we feel like God is messing over us again, because we're lacking obedience. And at the end of that, there are things that we have to do. We got to make sure we're not doing crazy things that are not morally sound to God. We got to make sure we're not doing things that are justifiable to us, but they're disrespectful to God. We got to make sure those things are in place. Now, here's what I want you to know too everybody's weight and what they're going through is subject to them and their story. But this is just a framework for you to really try to figure out if you are a victim of your own disobedience and you don't even realize it. This is, this is something that I try to do in these series. That's why the forgiveness one was so hard because I think people thought that I was just going to be bashing a person that needed to be forgiven when really I had to focus on the person that was holding unforgiveness, not the person who did the offense. And usually the enemy likes us to focus on the offense. I wasn't going to do that because here's the thing too. We live in a time now where people say, Oh, you're victim shaming. You just, no, that's another thing too. Sometimes that's a thing, but a lot of times that's not even God because sometimes people are not being victim shamed. The enemy will, will amplify some of this stuff because people are trying to get out of doing what they need to do to be their best. And everybody want to hide behind the guys and the title and God ain't pleased with that either. Yeah, I said it. There are times when it is absolutely the truth, but there are other times you're not being victim shamed. You just don't want to handle your business and fix what you did. That's not right. You don't like the fact that somebody is calling out something and God could be sending them to call it out so that you can be better. Let me tell you something. I know what it's like having a victim mentality, you know, for, for probably five to 10 years of my life in the, in the, in the part of my life where it was, you know, college and like growing into adulthood and learning how to adult. There was a lot of that going on with me personally. And when I thank you, Jesus, I was delivered from that. When you are delivered from a victim mentality, first of all, you can spot it a mile away in somebody else, especially when you're delivered from it and you see exactly what that trajectory is like. And then what ends up happening is, again, a victim is often a person who will find themselves, they will find themselves fault finding, blaming everybody, everything they fault. God, you got me waiting too long. Why you don't care about me? You gave it to her. You ain't give it to me. He did that and I ain't do this and blah, 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 blah. Girl, look, bro, look, God is not even trying. He is not even trying to hear that mess because it's not lining up with what he said to begin with. There's a strategy in this thing. That whole scripture, that one line gives a whole strategy. It gives a whole strategy for while you wait. Now watch this. Are you seeking what you need to seek first? Now, I want you to marry, marinate. Now, now, I'm about to say something, but we, gonna, we know how we get down on here. We're all about healing. We're all about serving. We're all about living authentically. And the reason why I'm so passionate about this is because for years I didn't do this. For years I acted like I did this and I did not do it, but it is my life now. Okay. Like I said, if I can't be transparent and honest with you about myself, then I can't tell nobody else nothing. But what I love is hear me out. Whoever has a platform and God is pushing you to the front too. what's going, what you have to do with that platform is you being honest about not only what you've been through, but setting yourself apart and setting a standard so that you can help other people get there who may be afraid to admit what you have, you have been willing to admit and face. They may not have been able to do that just yet. Right? So with that, okay, here we go. I want you to think about something, y'all. Listen, if you're going to complain, if you're going to be overwhelmed, and if you're going to be angry at God for waiting, at least just do what he says. 
Don't you think that's the least we can do, y'all? If you're going to be mad at him, be mad if you did everything, yo. Be mad if you did everything. If that's what you feel like, you feel like, Lord, I've done everything. Um, and I'm going to give you a news flash. Most times when you say, Lord, I did everything you told me you did to do, you probably didn't. I know a lot of y'all might check out right on the recording, right there at that part, but that is the truth, and a lot of you know it. You know it in your core. It is the absolute truth because you know for sure you did not do exactly what God told you to do. You know you didn't do it. You did all of the things you think you should have done, but many of you, and myself included, I did everything God told me to do. I did all the stuff he said, but... If he also told me to clean out my closet and give out my clothes, and if he also told me to move to another place, if he also told me to go and help this person do this and that, but I just did the other things like saying my prayers in the morning, doing my basic one, two. Yeah, see, y'all, I'm telling you, we got to we gotta fight. We got to fight what is sent to kill, steal, and destroy us, y'all. The only way we destroy that, the only way we win against that is if we are honest right here in this space. You're not doing it by yourself anymore. You can play this back as many times as you want and share it too. Listen, get get past that foolishness. Get past that mess. Get past that false belief. Get past that lie. That is a lie. Make sure if you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you have done every single thing you know you're supposed to do, but then now you just have to continue to rest in the Lord and continue to seek him first and his righteousness. And then you're going to be all right. That's the bottom line. Okay. So here's the thing. If you at least do what God says, and it doesn't go into the results you're seeking, then by all means, listen, take it up with him, y'all. I'm not even mad at you, but this is what I can promise you. If you follow what he says, that's a conversation that you will never have to have. You're never going to have to have the conversation about what you're doing. Why is this and that? Y'all, it took me so many years to figure that out. That's a question you never have to ask. I meet people. And I, in fact, I just recently met somebody who's assisting me with something. And they're like, yo, I'm patient. I'll be like, yo, I, I'm done. Like, I'm going to check out. They're like, no, you're not. I'll show up at your house. I'm like, oh, snap. <laughs> but it's because they get that part. I didn't get that part for a long time. And what I'm saying is, once you commit to it, you know it is what it is, and you're fine with trusting God with the outcomes, right? Now, here's the thing, y'all. Yo, you're carrying a weight that you're not designed to carry, God did not design you to carry a W-E-I-G-H-T while you W-A-I-T. That is not it. Okay, listen to me. In some cases, we know we have to go through seasons and things may be a little heavier than in other times. But one thing I know for sure about the father, the father is not brutal not to his children. The Lord will chastise. He will discipline. Yes, he will. But the Lord is not cruel. I need to tell some of you, you got to break that off for you today. In the name of Jesus, some of y'all are so angry with God and you're smiling, you're going to church, you're paying your tithes, but you're secretly so mad. You're mad as all get out, but you're ashamed. You don't want to tell nobody, but I know in the spirit realm, you ain't happy. You really not happy. You're angry. You're angry because God, you doing this, you the, you the picture of the singles ministry. You the, you, the, you, the, you the best person who do this. You got all this going on and you like God has still got me out here in these streets and I'm seeing this one doing this and this one got that. Listen, it's, it, hey, I get it. I understand. I understand, right? But here's the thing. You're only overwhelmed, my friend, because you are trying to get, quote unquote, all these things through the world. And you might say, no, I'm not. I listen to my word every day. I don't curse. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't do this and that. But that that's not the barometer for that. I don't know. I don't know where that came from. I don't know why people think because people have outward sins and you have inward sins. It makes you better than somebody. That's not fair. I know people that's nicer and kinder and they don't even do all those things and they may have issues with, with substances, but they, I, I see them show more God than other people. I'm just keeping it a buck right here. Straight up. I done seen it on both sides. Right? So 
Here's the thing, y'all. This is where you got to be careful. And I'm wrapping up right up in here. Okay. When you try to get all these things through the world first, but you nickname it Jesus and you nickname it a blessing, it's going to always blow up in your face. So today, this is for the person who is lost. You don't even feel connected to God and you are frustrated. You are sick of waiting. Go to the altar and say, Lord, show me myself. If this is the person that's a top person in church and your 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 perfect patty or your you know invincible Billy, whatever you call it, <laughs> you know, you're deep and wonderful, you still need to go to the Lord and say, Lord, show me myself. Because let me tell you something, people are not perfect and we are human. We might be spirit beings, but baby, we gotta work out some things in this human body, and it is not always a picnic, okay? It is not. So I need you to understand that it is okay to call yourself to the carpet. It is okay to trust and believe and to speak on these things with the father because it's going to make a difference for you. Okay. Because here's the thing. I can tell you no, a thousand times. No, the way for you to get to the weight and, 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 and excuse me, for you to release the weight and the, 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 the heaviness while you wait, it is not going to come through doing it the world's way. It's only going to make it worse. You might have a temporary fix. You might have something temporary that makes you feel like, okay, well, I did it this way. Now I feel better. It's like a temporary high. I can promise you it's going to dissipate. It's going to go away. It's not going to stay. Whether you want to believe that it's not, it's, or that, and, excuse me, or not, it's just not going to stay. Right? So listen, when God overwhelms us, you got to know who you're dealing with. God overwhelms us with his goodness. Okay? His greatness. That's when you feel an overwhelmed by the Lord. Stuff like confusion and, and being upset and anger and hatred. If you overwhelmed right now with that, God ain't even give you that. That's why I wanted to end this on that simple thing. That don't even add up. That don't even line up. It don't line up. So if you're not feeling that, it's time to reevaluate the things that have gotten you here in the first place. Then maybe you should consider what you do need to reevaluate. Really think about it. Maybe you don't feel like you're like, yeah, Robin, I hear you, but no, I'm not reevaluating no things. I know I'm doing what God said. Well, God bless you, baby. This might not be for you. But for those of you who, who feel like you have it, but you still feel like, Lord, I just want to double check. Then look again, I, I, I'm genuine. I'm not being smart when I say that y'all. I'm serious. I'm not tripping either way, but I got to tell y'all my goal is to serve you and to help you live your authentic purpose. And the best way we can do that is by being real honest with each other. And, and that's what it is. You know, um, God wants to bless you. And most importantly, y'all, while you wait, the biggest thing I want you to know is that you're waiting, not because God is trying to torture you, but you're waiting because God wants you to operate in a kingdom blessing, not a, not a blessing that's contrived by your hands, Ishmael style. He's trying to give you an Isaac type blessing. And that's usually covenant. That usually takes time. It has to matriculate through whatever path the Lord set it on. Okay. I know it doesn't always feel great, but it is what it is. So I want you to be happy. I want you to rejoice. And I just pray today as we talked about all these things, know that they will be added unto you. And even though you are overwhelmed with the weight, that can shift. Today can be the first day that you can start looking at waiting from a different perspective. And I can promise you this, even if you're dealing with Ishmael, even if you went ahead of God, if you keep believing and trusting God for your covenant blessing, if you keep trusting God for what you're waiting for, you're still going to get your Isaac blessing. You're still going to get it. Keep moving forward. I love y'all. Thank you for listening. Make sure you like, you share, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. Please share, share, share. And I thank you guys so much. Make sure you tune in with me tomorrow. And tomorrow is inspired by Psalm 37, 4. And you know that is my favorite scripture. Seek your happiness in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So check out tomorrow for the desires of your heart on Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too.